Turning now to another big announcement this week on education. A group of educators, business leaders, foundations, and unions from around the state are joining together to push a comprehensive plan to address K-12 reforms. It's called Launch Michigan, and together the over 30 groups represent about 700,000 people. Now, what makes this push different from other groups and studies? Let's take a look with some guests joining the table with us. Say hi to Jen Nelson. She's the Vice President of Public Policy and Economic Development at Business Leaders from Michigan. Jen, it's good to see you. We also saw you this spring at the Education Summit as well that we covered. Yeah. So it's good to have you here at the table. And also with us here is Don Retruba, the Executive Director of the Michigan Association of School Boards. Hi, Don, and welcome to my week. Good to have you Thank here. Thank you for having me on. All right. I'm glad we're here to discuss this, this big initiative that was launched this week. And Jen, I'm going to give you first crack at this. Explain to us how this is different from any other coalition or 21st Century Education Commission that we've seen before. Sure, thank you, Christy. Um, this is a great opportunity, um, and this is happening outside of um, government, if you will. Um, this is initially a business-led um, group that has come together. We were the initial conveners at, at Business Leaders for Michigan. And this is unique. This is historical for Michigan because it is business, labor, education, including charter, mm -hmm. philanthropic, other community leaders all coming together to solve our education system's challenges. We haven't seen this before in Michigan. Um, and this, it, what makes it different, different is all the leaders are coming together, volun voluntarily mm -hmm. coming together to do this because we see the challenges um, happening right now. And Don, obviously, we've talked a lot about some of the scores and where Michigan ranks in terms of the rest of the country. And we have study after study, it feels like, or that have been commissioned saying, well, we've got problems here and there. So what is this initiative going to do in terms of taking some of the numbers that we've seen before and then putting something together and saying, this is how we need to attack it? Well, I think the intent anyways, as we start working together, is focus on four or five areas. Uh, teacher preparation, uh, teacher professional development, um, talking to those that are in the classroom and figuring out what they need to be successful and help our kids be successful. Uh, I think it's a much, um, as Jen said, more grassroots movement in that it's not government asking people to sit on a commission. And we want to try to figure out what the solutions are, whether they be on the policy side or the finance side, to say, how do we improve the scores that you mentioned? How do we improve the outcomes for kids? And I think when a single group or a couple groups work together on something, it doesn't have nearly the same impact or buy-in as when you get this group. And I think more importantly is we need to, as the conveners of bringing this all together, um, hold the legislature and the governors going forward accountable to, if we can come up with a solution, don't change it for a while. Let our educators stick with it and work for a number of years at it and show improvement because we're on this kind of mirror ground on and off where the next batch of legislators and the next governor comes in and this is their idea. And I think it's really put education at a disadvantage in Michigan where other leading states, they have stuck with the plan and worked on it. And that I think more than anything has made them successful. Mm -hmm, the continuity, Nolan. So, so Jen, you've opted against a comprehensive plan. You're taking some slices of the education problem. Which slices are you taking? So we are looking, based on all the reports, and we've seen mm -hmm. there's dozens of reports out there, and there's a lot of crossover and similarities um, in the reports. So what we are looking at initially are, um, as Don mentioned, teacher support and development, including elevating the profession. Uh, we need to retain educators, but we also need to attract educators. So teacher development and support, and, and even broader educator um, support, helping our principals be successful in the, in the school buildings. Accountability. So accountability not just for teachers and students. We are measuring teachers and students, but holding the entire K-12 system accountable for uh, improving our student outcomes. Mm -hmm. We are also looking at um, funding. Uh, we know funding is a component um, for the policies that we want to hopefully um, have implemented. We also need to um, look at, there's a basis of the School Finance Research Collaborative did uh, research around what is the true cost to educate every student equitably. And that was one of the things that Business Leaders for Michigan came out in our report. So we're very happy to see what the School Finance Research Collaborative did is, is what, what does that look like? And it's re research based. However, we think we need to go a step further. We know that there are a lot of, um, lot of funding currently in the system. Where is that funding going? Mm -hmm. Is it getting to the classroom? Is it getting to the students? 
to really improve those student outcomes. We also think there's an opportunity from a public awareness uh, perspective uh, to really engage the public and so they understand truly what, what the crisis is with our education system and not, not um, so parents become defensive, but so they want to engage in the solution. So we think those are um, a handful of things that we want to focus on initially within Launch Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think uh, that the way we govern schools here in Michigan is one of the things we need to, to revisit as well, both at the state level where we've got the governor, uh, an independently elected school board and superintendent, but then also at the local level where uh, school boards still have, uh, you know, elect elections to decide who's, who's going to be in charge. That's, these are sort of antiquated models. Other states are trying some other stuff. I mean, we are seeing other states, I mean, in large part, at least at the local level, and that's my membership. When you look across other states, we've had kind of the, and we've had it in Michigan, the mayoral appointed, mm -hmm. the governor appointed sort of thing as it relates to boards or no board, and it's a CEO model. Um, there hasn't been great success in that, but I think what maybe a few other states have looked at, and I subscribe to the accountability model all the way up, um, we as Michigan, uh, about half the states in the country, re require specific training for board members once they're elected to learn what their job is, to learn about school finance, to learn about labor negotiations. And in Michigan, that's not something we do. And so, you know, we do have an electoral process, but just because Jen or I or one of you got elected to a board doesn't mean you understand what it means to be a governance body for a board. And I think we can do better to help the people that want to give their time. It's a tough job. But like, what can we do to make them better board members? Um, so not maybe changing the governance model, but actually trying to improve those that sit on boards. So you're looking for legislative solutions, or how does this plan come become reality? I mean, how are you executing? So this summer we're going to be really busy um, with the announcement yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, we had our first um, partnership meeting uh, right after the announcement. Um, which was a great um, partnership meeting to get some ideas on the table. We're going to be really busy this summer rolling up our sleeves to develop action plans. And I think it's going to be a combination of both uh, legislative and maybe some um, administrative. So we will be evaluating that over the summer as we work on the action plans. So uh, let me let me go back to something, and Jen and, and Don, I want you to weigh on this, because what I'm listening to when we're listening to governance and you're listening to are the solutions going to be legislative or are they going to be administrative? Have we politicized education so much in this state that it feels like it is a right and a left issue? Jen, let me start with you. I think education should be nonpartisan, and I think it has been politicized over the years. Um, it should be a nonpartisan issue. At the end of the day, we're talking about kids. The kids need to be at the center of these discussions. Um, and, and I think th this group um, that came together, very diverse group of organizations coming together, and is an example of how this can be a, um, a nonpartisan, a bipartisan um, effort. And, but is it also one of these things, Don, that you have to now push or put in front of whoever is who the, the candidates running for governor and saying, all right, is education going to be your top priority? And are you going to be able to go along with what this organization launched Michigan? Because you have so many people now that are saying this is what the push is going to be. And this is what we want the next head of the state to follow through on. That, that's exactly we've spent a lot of time in pre-meetings going up to yesterday talking about that very issue which is our hope is that because of the, the, the breadth of this coalition and its business and labor and management, that we will actually get the legislators and the policymakers, the governor, state board, whoever it is, that if we can agree amongst ourselves on the direction to take public education, even if it's in limited numbers of areas, that they're going to take the politics out of it and say it's the right way to go. I mean, we saw what I thought was a very good coalition of folks with the Detroit coalition a couple of years ago, really run into the buzzsaw of politics in Lansing. And that was a pretty broad-based coalition. Now, this one's broader because it is statewide, mm -hmm. but we want to overcome because I lobbied for 18 years representing elected boards, and I would say that education in Michigan has been very politicized over that period of time. Nolan. Well, when you, when you talk about how this goes forward in an election year, will you be presenting each of these candidates for governor and for state senate state house with your plan and saying you know we want you to sign off and uh, your support or your support for this is contingent on the support of our organizations for your candidacies will this be a litmus test in the election i mean i think timing wise our hope is to at least 
before before the election or right at election time, be able to have our recommendations um, and ideas put before every gubernatorial candidate and legislative candidate. And I think our plan is to contact them during the summer to let them know, hey, we're, we, we are a coalition that we are looking for solutions and we would ask you to kind of hold off on the next big idea that would come mm -hmm. out of you as an elected official and wait for us to come out with some recommendations late in the fall and take a look at those before you. And so far, Jen, so this I mean, is the they lead. haven't, uh, the gubernatorial candidates haven't been very not large with their education yeah. plans. So right. it works to your benefit, perhaps. Agree, and that, that is our message, as Don um, just mentioned. Keep an open mind to the candidates mm -hmm. that are running. Uh, we are working throughout the summer um, to really put together what we think a plan. Again, it's coming to the 70% uh, because a lot, of, a lot of times we come to the table with the 10, 20, 30%, and maybe I'm a little optimistic here, but the 10, 20, 30% that we never will agree to. Mm. But if we can put that aside, keep that outside, and focus on the 70% that we can agree on, right. that's what we need to come to uh, over the summer. And I think we can do that. Stephen, you get the last question. Yeah, any, any reaction from the existing sort of infrastructure of educational leadership so far to this? Uh, does the governor, superintendent, uh, said anything about this effort and, and maybe their willingness to listen a little more to this than they have to efforts in the past? Well, we're very pleased that the interim um, state superintendent, um, Sheila Alls, is part uh -huh. of our uh, uh -huh. Launch Michigan effort, so we're very happy to have her part of that. Um, and I think we will continue to work um, you know, as a coalition, and we are having people express interest, um, both from within and without, um, outside of government, in and outside of government, um, on our initiative, and, and we plan on to continue to expand. Okay. Don, I'm gonna let you um, kind of get the last word on this, and what would you say to parents who have heard about, we're gonna do improvement here, or we're really gonna focus on education, what would you say to parents in Michigan about how Launch Michigan is going to make a different impact? I think parents so often are very concerned about their child and how their child is doing it. Same thing for me and my two kids that are in school. But I do think parents need to think more globally and look at not just the what's happening with their kid in school, but how is every kid being served in a school? And I think this coalition and partnership is really looking and saying every kid, no matter where they live, should have access to an equitable education, whether it be my financial resources or academic resources. And we want parents to engage and say that's important in Michigan and let their legislators know that's important so that all kids are getting what they need when they go to our schools. So when they're coming out of school, they get jobs, they want to stay in Michigan, they want to stay home uh, and not move out of the state. All right, we're going to be following all the work you're going to be doing throughout the summer. So make sure you update us, especially as we head back to school in the fall. Don Wachruba, Jen Nelson, it's good to see you. Thanks, guys.